Hey everybody, Adam here with Hometown Acres. We are joined by Bob Nelson of Metsa Machines. Up, he is guys? coming to take our Yapa 365 basic model away from us, but you didn't come empty handed. You brought us a different unit to swap out. Exactly. Tell us a little bit about what machine you brought for us so today. So you had a 365 TR basic, which is tractor PTO powered. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, tying up your tractor is sometimes stressful. Of course, you still have an excavator, but um, we wanted to, showcase the pro version um, with the gas engine on it so and there's a few different things we go from a basic to a pro um, you're going to end up with joystick control of the saw and the infeed and i think the one feature that i know you're really going to like what do you think what do you think is going to be the most beneficial feature of a pro versus a basic so from what i've I looked tell at <laughs> is the infeed belt so okay. on on the tractor or the PTO powered model, the infeed belt only spins in. So on the if, basic, yeah. On the basic. So if, if you ever have a log that gets jammed or something like that, you have to find a way to either pull it back out or get it out of the machine. This one, it the infeed belt will spin in and you can reverse it back exactly. out. Exactly. And it seems like when you go from a basic to a pro, it's it's a it's a decent price jump. Like I said, you get joystick control of the infeed, the saw and the split functions, um, hydraulic knife height adjustment, and then you get a speed control on the outfeed conveyor. Mm -hmm. But that the one thing that I don't think a lot of people think about is that backwards of the infeed. That yeah. is going to be, and I know that I know that's something we talked about before. So yeah. I wondered if we would still be on the same page. <laughs> yeah. So I think we're going to go run uh, the TR basic model one more time, just for nostalgic purposes. Plus, that will give you an idea of of what we're talking about with the difference, because essentially the machine that he's taking and this one are the same machine. They both do yeah. 14 inch logs. Yep. Uh, everything about them is the same except yeah. for the creature comforts, right? Yep, exactly. Same frame size, same pivoting conveyor, um, same saw, all the components aside from the extra, like you said, creature features. Yeah. So we're going to go run one or two logs through that, and then we'll go ahead and swap out machines and get this one set up and show you a little bit more about how this one is just a little bit more comfortable to run. So that is one thing with this uh, 365 basic model, it is PTO powered. So you've obviously got to drop whatever attachment you have on the back of the tractor to run it. And that's one of the things we get in the comments the most is yeah. you're tying up your tractor, you're putting hours on your tractor, which we always laugh because that's why you bought a tractor is to put hours on it. But um, it is one thing that's going to be a nice convenience with right. the new machine is not having to hook up the tractor to run it. You can just come down here with a four wheeler and run the process. Turn the key and go, it. yeah. yeah. So let's go get this hooked up one last time. Right. Hooking up the PTO shaft isn't a ton of work, but it's still one extra step well, that the, you won't have to deal with now yeah, on the gas engine machine. The one nice thing about this is you don't have to hook up the three point. You just have right. to hook up the PTO shaft. Yeah. So it's really not that bad. Yeah. But you know, you have to, if you don't have the tractor down here, you've got to go get it. Yeah, and then like you just had to take off the attachment for it as well, so. Right, which luckily if you've that. got a quick hitch, we've made it as easy as you can with a quick hitch. Yeah. And not actually having to hook up the three point. But, but not everybody has the quick hitch either, so if yeah. they got their blade on or mower or whatever, yeah. But in less than five minutes, I'm hooked up and ready to go. Right. With the new machine, I'll be able to save that five minutes. Yep. Adam's getting ready to run the last two logs on this machine. Um, looks like you got a couple nice cherry logs, huh? Yeah. So as he pushes back on the basic handle, the infeed runs. See the infeed running? Okay, now it stops. When he pulls down, that runs the saw. And since we have the auto split uh, disabled on here, he is going to manually engage the splitter. Try to get through just like that. Yeah, push up on the 
saw handle, the valve in the saw handle. So what log rack is that? That is the basic uh, 465 rack with one power feed roller. What do you think? Is this one going to go through? See, I would put this at there. I'd yeah. flip it. And it... Yeah. Let's see what it does. Oh, yeah. There it goes. All right, so you might be wondering if this video is about swapping out our Yappa machines, why do we have a Bobcat T770 here? Well, I've got Brian from Bobcat Aviri who is gracious enough to loan us this as a one day rental so that we can load the Yappa 365 because that machine weighs how much, Bob? About 2,600 pounds. 2,600 pounds. My Coyote tractor, we've tested this before, will not lift that. I think my loader lift capacity is 1,800 pounds. And Brian, what's the loader lift capacity of this Bobcat T770? The 770 weighs 10,515 pounds. At 50% of rated capacity, it's 4,960 pounds. So basically in the bucket, it will pick up close to 10,000 pounds. That's in the bucket. You got to take into consideration length, width, height. How far um, away from the pivot pins you are. Correct. And obviously we're using pallet forks here today. Yeah. So it's not going to lift anywhere near 10,000 or 5,000 pounds, but it should certainly lift 2,600 pounds yeah, with the forks. Yeah, because you're picking that up out, extended out with the lift points. Yep. So, I mean, like you said, that changes the capacity quite a bit. But yeah, it won't have any problem doing that. Perfect. Well, let's get it unloaded then. Now, because this isn't a deck over trailer, we're going to go have to go up high with straps. Uh, the 365 does have fork pockets that if you could get underneath it without the fender wells there, that's probably the easiest way to lift it. But uh, with the fender wells there, we're going to use straps, lift it up on out. And then once we get it on the ground and off the trailer, then we can use the fork pockets to move it. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and get the old machine all folded back up and in transport mode. And just to show you how quick and easy this is, this is the infeed table. This rolls up, locks into place there. Disconnect the hydraulic hoses. Pretty much after that, we just gotta fold the conveyor in.
All right, so we got both machines parked here side by side now. This is the new one, this is the old one. And I think I did pretty good job taking care of this one for the last year because it still looks yeah. just like this one over here. We've made quite a bit of firewood with it sitting over there, sold a bunch. And uh, but let's quickly, while they're sitting side by side, yeah. now you can see the difference in the, the yeah. two dashboards yeah. uh, between these machines. So explain the difference in the controls. Yeah, so um, like we saw on the basic, the basic is manual pull down. So, you know, you, you use your arm to pull for the saw, you push back to run the infeed belt. Um, it is really easy to use. It's one hand control, basically. These both, we took that auto split linkage out of just so you had more control over, over the uh, starting the split function. So, um, you know, you had to manually hit the start lever or the stop lever for the splitter that's going to be the same on this as well um, here we've got the knife height adjustment as mechanical and you know you've got the different detents in here but you do have to put some physical labor into using this to move it up and down you know you have to and i've what i've noticed is if you have a 40 or 50 pound round you're also that you get wedged on there yeah. you're lifting it up and down um, or if you've got any kind of anything wedged in there it's yeah. just is more difficult to do it with the hand lever there. Exactly. Both of these have the same conveyor on them. They both have that same mechanical slew uh, left and right. But when we go over to the Pro, now the joysticks are right here and it's still one hand control. So up and over does our infeed, come down, we do the saw. And on a normal Pro, you'd push up and the splitter would start. In this case, we'll hit here to start the splitter. Yep. And then we can infeed and, uh, infeed and start cutting our next piece. Now this T, joystick here. This one will move the knife up and down, left and right. And on a log rack, which you don't have here yet, or a log lifter, this would move the lifter up and down, okay. or it would advance the logs. So okay. they move that further over. It used to be here on the basic. You you actually have it there. Um, I noticed. And the, and yeah, the basic I mean, will still have the, that control. So you can still run these racks on basics, but this would move your log lifter up and down, or it would move the chains on your on your log rack. And just for further proof that these are the same machines, they actually yeah. have the cutouts for those. Right, hydraulic and you can see where the you can see where the mechanical cutout would be over here for on the pro version. They just got that sitting there. Very cool to see how these things are made. But yeah, otherwise the inside, you know, it's the same saw motor, it's the same stopping mechanism. Um, that one was a plus two, so it's got the you've got the the moving log stopper if you need to move it. Um, and then you still have automatic bar oiler with the adjustment right here. Okay. And yeah, then the knife height, like I said, it's kind of infinitely adjustable up and down. So it's really nice to be able to fine tune as you're cutting. You can kind of just tap it one way or the other instead of coming over here to wrench logs back and forth. And, and even if you don't have a log stuck in it, you know, you might have two pieces in it. You still have that extra weight where you're lifting. We're here. It doesn't yeah. matter. And you can also use that hydraulic wedge to kind of shimmy some logs yeah. out if, if you do mm -hmm. get a jam, right? Yeah. Let's look at the backside quick too. Yeah, One of the other is... things that's unspoken really um, on these is going from a basic to a pro, you get the speed control for the outfeed conveyor. So if you want, you can slow this down to a crawl so the logs will just fall off the end of it, or you can turn it up full blast and really launch them. But what people will do is they'll put four IBC totes out or whatever. You can speed it up, hit some, and then as that gets full, slow it down and instead of closer. having to move stuff with your tractor. Or in the dump trailer, if you want to fill yeah. the, the close side of the dump trailer yep. and then the far side of the dump trailer. Yep, exactly. Then we have the gas tank and it does look like a balloon. However, that's normal. Um, <laughs> That's part of the EPA stuff. There is a note that comes with it that tells you, hey, this is going to happen. When it gets to a certain pressure, it does vent. But right now, if we just open it, it'll vent into the atmosphere. Then we have the battery and, of course, the power plant, the Honda IGX 700 V-Twin. This, this is a nice looking motor here. It's, it's, um, it's got EFI. It's got electronic governor. So you turn the key, wait a couple seconds, crank it up, and you're in business. Yeah. They start even in, even in the coldest of weather. Um, one of the things that your basic or a regular, uh, a pro PTO machine would have, both of these have the oil cooler, but the, the ones that are PTO driven have the plug that you got to plug into your tractor. So you'd have the two prong plug hooked up to your battery or a cigarette lighter on your tractor and you have to plug that in. Now that's one less thing that you got to mess with as well because it's built into um, the system here. And then these all have a battery disconnect on them, hidden kind of right here. So right now the battery is turned off. So okay. if you're gonna be not using it for a while, just turn that off and you don't have to worry about the battery uh, putting power to anything. One of the things uh, we've ran into on the first gas engine machines that had the oil cooler on them, this is like 
probably three years ago now, uh, the oil coolers would start running in the sun because they had certain temperature thermostat in there. I don't know if it's 104 degrees, but when it's 90 degrees outside and the oil cooler's black, it's getting baked in the sun. So that fan would turn on because uh, it's wired direct to the battery. Now there's a disconnect switch there. So just turn that off when you're done using it. And Won't kill your battery. Yep, exactly. Perfect. Well, I don't think I can wait anymore. Let's get this thing moved over into place, get it and right. run, run a couple logs through it. All right, let's do it. Now before when we were positioning the Yappa 365 Basic, we had to keep in mind, we had to leave enough room on the front side of this machine to bring the tractor in to power it. But uh, now with the Honda GX700 on there, that's no longer a concern. We can pretty much put this thing wherever we want. Much uh, lower clearance tolerances we need for room for this machine. Um, these machines always have this jumper hose. So this jumper hose basically keeps the infeed in a loop. If you, if you don't have this hose on at all, your infeed belt won't work. Um, and what we're gonna do is take that jumper hose out and plug these two in. And that's gonna spin your roller on this rack. And it'll probably go backwards the first time. You got a 50-50 chance <laughs> since we didn't have it labeled, so. <laughs> and what I found interesting about these uh, hydraulic quick connects yeah. is you know, with a bald face couple, you got to pull the collar back to get them yeah. to release. Yeah. These, you got to jam in there and then yeah. them back out real quick. And one thing I've noticed too is to, to kind of jockey this a little bit, get the pressure out of it. Yeah. And then when we want to take it out, yeah, like you said, it's... Hey, let me, uh, oh. <laughs> I'll, I'll put one back in okay, just all right. to show how so it works. So it's kind of weird. It's Now it's in, and uh, now if I... Now it's out. Yep. So, yeah, that's, it's definitely a, different the first time that we got these. Because the old ones, they, they still use the fittings like this. And they were collars that you pulled back. So once we, we got these first, I was like, well, this is interesting. But it made me feel real dumb the first time I got it. And but look how easy it. it is, you know? It is very easy. But if you've never seen it before, you're hey, like, what, what do I do? You're not alone. <laughs> you're not alone. That happened to us as well. So, <laughs> so yeah, we'll flip the infeed down now. And then we'll get the, uh, the rack lined up with where it's got to go. Okay, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> Yeah, pull it straight back that way. Okay. Yep, and now now we just got to make sure that we're... Ken, I think your corner's got to come this way just a little bit. Yeah. Adam, are you ready? I'm ready. Love the sound of fuel injection. <laughs> yeah, and I'll just push, push up and over. Pull that down. Look at that. That's like a perfect.
10 is going to be perfect. 16s. Look at You're at the 8 right now. Heck yeah. I think once I run this for an hour, oh yeah, I'll be on to it. Yeah, I'm still. Yeah, that didn't take long. Well, we got uh, those two logs. Look at the rest. Look at the crate now. <laughs> yeah, we got in about five minutes time, and it smells good. Cherry's the best. I love it. Yeah. I love cherry. Anyway, if you guys enjoyed this one, give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget, go check out Metsa Machines YouTube channel. Thank you, Adam. I also want to thank uh, Bobcat of Erie for bringing down that T770 so we could yeah. make this possible, unloading and reloading. Hope to see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. All right, so one more thing. I know people are gonna ask what is happening with this used demo Yappa 365. So I'll let you take that one. So this one is gonna be coming back to our yard and uh, we'll get it set up in the yard. I'm not sure what accessory we'll put with it yet, if it's a log lifter or a rack or what, but this will be available for sale and it will have a demo discount on it and still a full warranty. So in the next week or so, you'll probably see it posted on our Facebook page and then also on our Lumberman Equipments um, classifieds. But before it leaves, need you to do one thing.